Welcome to the channel if you're new. I'm Alicia and I am so excited you're here. I am going to taste test and share some gluten-free bread options with you today. Now I don't have a gluten allergy, but I am sensitive to wheat. I get headaches and I notice that gluten not only makes me bloat, but really negatively affects my mood, which would make sense now that gluten is being connected to both anxiety and depression. So in general, I try to stay away from it unless it's a special occasion when the indulgence is really worth it for me. I try to eat gluten-free when I can. That being said, bread is a delicious gluten-filled food and trying to take the gluten out of bread doesn't often work, which is why I figured I would find the best one and share it with all of you to save you some time and money. There are a lot of gluten-free options for breads available now. I will say up front that gluten-free does not equal healthy, better for you, or clean necessarily. In fact, a lot of gluten-free products are actually more processed, containing more ingredients than their traditional counterparts. So you've got to read the label to know. I am not going to tell you which is the healthiest, although I will comment on the health aspects as we go through them, but my main goal is to find the best tasting one today. I've got 10 gluten-free breads to try today in no particular order, let's get to it. First up is Glutino gluten-free seeded bread. The nutrition varies on these. Some breads are one slice per serving, some are two, so I'm gonna keep it consistent with one slice as we compare. For this brand, a slice is about 28 grams, 75 calories, three grams of fat, and 12 grams of carbs. The base ingredients are tapioca starch, brown rice flour, and egg whites. Gluten-free breads typically have decently long ingredients lists because they need fillers and thickeners to help them get their form without the gluten. Tapioca is a starch extracted from cassava root, which sounds great, but it contains very little fiber or nutritional value, and it's a bit of a controversial ingredient. You're going to see it a lot today, and I will say that this is not my favorite ingredient to see on the list. I would not consider it something that I personally want to consume as a regular part of my diet. It is essentially empty calories. It does need to be kept frozen, which is very common for gluten-free breads, as you'll see with many of these. And honestly, it's a bit of a bummer because dealing with frozen bread isn't fun or convenient, but but it just won't last otherwise. This one does note new improved recipe, which makes me nervous. Why does the recipe need improving? Uh-oh. It feels, feels a little bit sticky. Okay. Hmm. It's decently soft, but it's gummy. I'm not about that. That is the problem with most gluten-free breads. They taste gummy in the middle. They don't have yeast, and it's hard to do bread without yeast. If this is a new improved recipe, I definitely don't wanna try the last one. This one is a no for me. Uh, I would say on a scale of one to five, I'd give it a 1.5. Next, how about Kroger's seven grain gluten-free bread? One slice is 36 grams, so it's about 25% more. I don't wanna say larger necessarily, but perhaps denser than the previous bread. Otherwise, stats are similar, probably because the ingredients are similar. Okay, this one is thicker, but it feels gummy too. I'm going for a bite in the middle rather than the crust. The texture is lacking. It's honestly, it's really crumbly. It's maybe a little bit better than the last one. I give it a two. How about Trader Joe's gluten-free bread? This whole grain variety is tapioca starch based and also includes potato starch and brown rice flour, as well as some sorghum, teff, and amaranth flour. This bread does not need to be refrigerated. Who knows why? They are small slices, 25 grams per slice, which also makes it less calories and macros per slice. But of course, you're also getting less bread, so that makes sense. I will let you know that in my bento videos, when I need a smaller bread to fit in the compartment, this is the bread I use and it fits perfectly. I'm going into the middle. Hmm. Okay, the texture is a bit better. The flavor, meh. But the texture helps a lot because, you know, the flavor can always get better by toasting it. I know for a fact that almost all of these are gonna be better toasted. And of course, based on whatever ingredients you add to it. I give it a fair middle rating of three. And it's nice that it doesn't need to be refrigerated. Cook's sourdough. It is gluten-free as well as soy and nut-free and vegan, so this one does not use eggs. You can refrigerate or freeze it, so I guess the fridge is a bit better for me. This bread is denser. It's 50 grams for one slice, whereas the Trader Joe's was 50 grams for two slices, but 
I have got to say, I much prefer the ingredients here. Sourdough starter, which is brown rice and sorghum flour. Tapioca flour is still there, but further down on the list. And there are overall less ingredients, fillers, and preservatives. It is perhaps a bit cleaner. So on its own, it's pretty crumbly. It's barely keeping together. It tastes like sourdough. It smells and tastes like sourdough. It's really sour smelling. But this would not work as a sandwich. Now, I did toast some of it and it works much better toasted. So, if it's toasted, yes, but if not, it's rough. I'd say 2.5. Whole Foods also has their own gluten-free sandwich bread. It's also dense, one slice is 50 grams, and that does mean in order to have two slices, you'd be at 300 calories, not including sandwich ingredients, just to be aware. But calories aren't everything. The ingredient list is short, although it's still got tapioca starch. Unfortunately, this one also has non-fat milk powder, so it is not dairy-free either, and it's gotta be in the freezer. Big surprise. But is it a classic favorite? All right. This is better in flavor, but not in texture. So now I think we've flipped from the beginning. I do think overall it's better than the first two, and it's comparable to the Trader Joe's one. Even though the texture is worse, the flavor is better. I'd say this is another fair middle ground. Three out of five. Okay, here is the quick mandatory plug to ask you to subscribe if you want more videos like this. We really work so hard to create them and we wanna make sure that you get the chance to see them. So hit the bell so that you can be notified. I really appreciate you. Okay. Canyon Bakehouse has a few different gluten-free options and they have bagels too. A slice is 34 grams and 90 calories. More of the same with the ingredients. It is dairy-free, soy-free, and vegan as well, but you do have to store it in the freezer. It is crazy how these breads are so similar in ingredients, but something about the proportions or the method of the recipe must differ because they do not all taste the same. This one is fluffy. It's much more actual bread-like in texture. Mmm, it tastes more bread-like. And it's also Swedish. Not Swedish like from Sweden, but like it tastes sweet like bread. And it has a really nice flavor. I have actually been getting this bread for a while because I have learned that it's one of the better ones. Honestly, I'd say this is a four and a half. It's close. It's, it's not perfect, but much better than some of the rest. This essential baking company, Superseded Multigrain, is actually from Costco, and it comes as a double loaf. It's dairy-free, nut-free, and soy-free, in addition to gluten-free, of course, but it does contain egg white, so it is not vegan. The bread can be stored in your pantry and stay fresh for months until you open it, and then you have to use it within seven days or put it in the fridge. I like it. It's 41 grams per slice for size. Stats are similar to most of the rest, as are the ingredients, although the base is rice flour, a mix of white, brown and sweet rice. The tapioca starch is there, but much further down on the list. This one also uses pear juice concentrate and plum puree rather than straight up sugar, which is neat to see. The taste is decent. I actually like the seeds on the outside. It's moderately fluffy. It's not too gummy. The best part is that it doesn't need to be frozen. Once you open it though, you do have to put it in the fridge. I give it a 3.5. Food for Life has many gluten-free breads. This is the brown rice one, and this is also the brand that does Ezekiel bread. Now remember, Ezekiel bread is sprouted, but it's not completely gluten-free, although sprouted wheat does contain less gluten than regular. This bread, however, is made with brown rice flour as a base. There is agave, which if you've seen my Sweeteners 101 video, you know is sneaky because it actually contains more fructose than table sugar, and it's got the tapioca flour, which is the same as tapioca starch, but the list overall is much shorter, so so that makes me happy. It's 43 grams per slice, so one of the denser options, and it does store in the freezer. This is bad. Oh, it's flavorless. It's sort of like cardboard, earthy cardboard, but it's also sort of bitter. It's like it's made out of breadcrumbs. It almost tastes like brown rice somehow. I love Ezekiel bread, but this ain't it. Rudy's homestyle gluten-free bread is one of the more common ones people find at any grocery store. The brand has gotten pretty big. It's free of soy and dairy, but it isn't vegan. Still, the first ingredient other than water is dang tapioca starch again, rats. A slice is 37 grams and 100 calories. So you can see most of these breads with similar ingredients do have very close stats. Although this one does have a few more carbs per slice comparatively. It says soft and yummy bread, but is it? I just think bread shouldn't have to put that on the label. That's how you know that bread without gluten is bad. It's actually so soft. It feels like real bread and it looks like a cartoon slice of bread. 
Okay, this actually has a great texture. It's probably the closest to white bread that we've seen. The flavor isn't as abundant as the Canyon Ranch one, but the texture is really good. And I have had this one toasted, it is spot on. I give this one a 4.52. Okay, last one, the follow your heart gluten-free oat bread. This one is vegan, nut, soy, and of course, egg and dairy free. 45 grams per slice, so another one on the denser side, but I am happy to see the main ingredient is oat flour, yay. But the tapioca starch is still there, as is the cane sugar. Still, it's a shorter list, so I'd say this is another preferred option for my standards. Is it soft and delicious? That is not good. There is some flavor, but that is a rough texture. It's getting stuck in the back of my throat and it's very gummy. I would not get this myself, but I don't think it's worse than the other one, than the worst one that I tasted. So I'm giving it a 1.5. So that is my gluten-free bread taste review. Uh, I would say Canyon Bakehouse and Rudy's are at the top for me. You know me though, I am never going to tell you what to eat or not eat. I hope that I can give you education, information, and insight to help you feel more confident making the choice that's right for you. That is my goal here, to empower you with knowledge. So if you found this helpful, I hope that you will share it with someone. I appreciate you being here. If you want more videos like this, let me know in the comments below what you would like to see. I'll see you next week with a brand new episode. And remember, it's all a matter of mind over munch.